If you've never sat in on a junior level high school health class, then let me enlighten you as to what you would see. 25 children and in my class they would be sitting in a circle, cheeky smiles so they know what's coming, and a lot of questions. See, I always run the class with the question box that sits to the side of the room, and students are encouraged to write down their questions about anything that's going on, friendship issues, questions about their physical development, and, of course, sex. I am bombarded with questions about pornography, or is this normal, is that normal, what age can you have sex, what does contraception even mean, and invariably, some sort of question about dating, mobile phones, and the internet, sexting. Andrews and today we are talking about the way teenagers are affected by the growing sexting culture. We all know that adolescents spend much of their time online. Snapchat, Musical.ly, Facebook, Instagram, the list goes on. Young people, though, like adults, engage with social media to socialise, to experience entertainment and to share their lives with each other. The teenagers are meant to be used for experimentation, to find out who you are, what you like. However, in today's digital culture, this experimentation is not as harmless as it used to be. Flo Gabriel, in her paper, Sexting, Selfie and Self-Harm, explains that when life is captured, captioned and shared, young people are subject to increased scrutiny of self and others. Popularly, it is believed that adolescent engagement with social media is harmful to their self-development. It challenges the notion that life is simply meant to be lived during youth. Instead, there is now a demand to deliberately negotiate the image that they want to share with the world. Who do they want to be? Who do they want the world to think they are? a big decision and with the permanence of the internet has long-reaching consequences. But this is the reality for us, the reality of the world that they will enter when their schooling is over. So surely it makes sense to get them practicing from an early age, right? I mean we give them swimming lessons from babies so that they can swim in the ocean when they're adults. Same thing. Not quite. You see in terms of the development of the adolescent brain, the ability to process social and emotional information is much more mature than the part responsible for determining risk factors. So, they're more likely to post that photo of themselves during a drunken night out, for example, because the potential, and here's the important part, immediate reward rates higher in their brain than the risk that their parents or their future employers might stumble upon it. What does this mean for sexting? Well, as we know, teens, like adults, have a deliberately constructed identity online. And the way that adolescents, and in particular teenage girls, portray themselves online has a direct correlation to their willingness to engage in digital risk-taking behaviours. A 2016 study out of the Netherlands found that sexy self-presentation on social networking sites increased the likelihood of teenage girls engaging in sexting. When we think of teenagers sexting, the image conjured is often one of a teenage girl feeling pressured by a boy to send sexual images. This is certainly the image favoured by the media and even schools, but is this pressure really as pervasive as we are led to believe? And how does this pressure even manifest? In 2015, researchers Murray Lee and Thomas Croft analysed current data into this topic and suggested that while pressure does exist, it's unlikely that it is a key motivating factor for the majority of teenagers, and particularly young girls, setting sex. Instead, it's something a lot more natural. Hormones. Sheffield Futures, a youth support service out of the UK, identified six reasons that teens sext. Number one, a natural curiosity about sex. This often occurs as teens are becoming more socially and sexually aware. They then start to push boundaries and take risks as their awareness of these things grows. Secondly, as a way to enhance and explore romantic relationships. Sexting provides them with an instant validation that we know drives many of young people. Thriller. This is particularly evident on Snapchat because the prevailing opinion is that once an image is uploaded, it's only there for a short amount of time and then it's gone. However, with the advent of screen capturing features on smartphones, this is no longer the case. An image that you think is temporary can easily be snapped on a phone and kept forever. Another reason is it's due to feeling pressure, which we discussed. Girls in particular are more likely to be susceptible to this pressure to send sexually explicit photos, while teenage boys tend to experience pressure to obtain images. Uh, it's also a boost to their self-esteem. As we have already discussed, teens have a cognitive prevalence for engaging in behaviours that have immediate social reward. So they get more likes, they have more interactions, a boost to their self-esteem. And finally, 
If we consider the technical, the technological culture teens are growing up in, sexting therefore is simply a normal, natural process. It's highly normalised for them. So we've talked about the consequences. Really, the only upside into engaging in sexting goes no further for a teen than the possibility of a likely temporary relationship being made more exciting. And upon that relationship ending, those images are deleted. That's the best case scenario. Potential downfall though and consequences of sending sex can be much more serious. Remember, we are talking about a large number of people sexting. 19% of teens reported to have sent sexually explicit images and 31% have reported to have received them. So these severe consequences are affecting a lot of kids. It is a spectrum though of consequences. On the one end of this spectrum is the humiliation and the emotional devastation that are the repercussions of a victim of revenge porn. On the other end of the spectrum lies the harsh legal consequences of sexting perpetrators. Laws and criminalisation of digital based offences is growing. For example, in New South Wales, the government is currently seeking to do just this with revenge porn. But let's step back for a moment and remember that we are talking about minors, children and teens aged under 18. This in and of itself has ramifications as the distribution and owning of sexually explicit images of a minor, even by another minor, falls under child pornography laws. In the US, the most extreme case of this, as highlighted by Reid Ibbotson in his journal article on teenage sexting and the law, is that a 16-year-old girl, for example, in the US, who takes and sends sexually explicit images of herself to another 16-year-old boy, for example, is liable to receive 20 years in prison or a life sentence in the US federal law. That is not to mention the non-criminal ramifications like bullying, which can have a devastating impact on the victim. Which brings us back to the start. How have teenagers been influenced by the sexting culture? Regardless of their reason for doing it, it's not a good idea. The legal, social and emotional consequences of underage people sending and receiving sexually explicit images far outweighs the immediate gratification. All we can do is attempt to educate them on these risks, keep the conversation going and honestly answer their questions. I'm Kristen Andrews, thank you for watching and feel free to leave me a comment below or any questions that you have.